Uh, it's a exciting time around our offices again. You, you, it seems like recruiting never stops, so we've got another junior day on Saturday with uh, uh, quite a few guys coming in that will be at practice Saturday morning. Uh, we just got through with the NFL Combine, and uh, our guys seem to have done really well, the five that were there. Uh, we'll have our pro day at the uh, end of, of March to give the guys that didn't have a chance to go to the Combine an opportunity to show their stuff because that's chosen by, by the NFL. We have no input into the Combine. And, and also the guys that maybe didn't have the the day they wanted the combine in every area will have a chance to go back and, and redo some of those things at home. And, and then uh, the most obvious things, we start spring practice tomorrow. The first practice will be, first two practices will be in shorts as mandated by the NCAA. You have to have three of your 15 practices in shorts. And uh, we start with the first two because they ask us to. And then after that, you can mix the other one in uh, really to give the kids a break uh, from hitting some down the, down the road. Uh, but we also feel like that uh, uh, it's a, a fun time for us since this is the first time since 2000 that we haven't had a, a coaching change. So we should have more continuity going into spring practice with our staff than, than just about at any time that we've been here. It was also interesting this morning that uh, some of the coaches brought up that the young men that were recruiting that our juniors were five years old when we got to Austin in, in 1998. So. Um, they, they followed us uh, very closely. There will be a lot of great competition out on the field this spring. Uh, you start looking at the different positions and, and a lot of guys that played uh, really well at times last year but, but didn't get to, to start or step up. So we're going back to try to find the two deep. Uh, we have a lot of great players to replace. You start looking at the seniors that left. Not only were some of them great players but great leaders. And um, uh, especially you look at the, the defensive front with Henry Melton, uh, Brian Arakpo, and, and Roy Miller for sure. Those guys uh, were outstanding players for us last year and really, really helped us with our pass rush. Um, and then you start looking at uh, offensively, what Quan did for us was just amazing uh, throughout his career here. And um, running game, we've talked about, we want to tighten it up some and, and uh, not have as many zero or negative yardage uh, gains or losses. Uh, we'd like to, to be able to sit there and be second and six and second and five and second and four. Uh, so we're looking at trying to secure the line of scrimmage better. Uh, uh, who replaces Quan? Nobody can. He's just like the, the great players that we've had. Somebody has to step up and, and be the next guy, but, but no one can take Quan's place, and especially with his ability to lead uh, being older. Uh, and what do we do at tight end? I mean, that's, that's something that's really important. How, how do you look at the running backs and try to separate them a little bit better? As we start going into spring practice, you, uh, Colts established himself as, as a leader, and he is our quarterback. And then you, you, you want to see John and Sherrod continue to improve and, and get better and, and be able to take over if Colt needs to step out. Uh, we felt like that uh, we had some great kickoff returns, but we weren't consistently one of the best teams in the country in kickoff returns, so we want to be better there. Uh, we felt like the same with kickoff coverage. We, we made some improvements. Uh, but maybe even the, the kickoff uh, after we score at Texas Tech, uh, that might have been the difference in, in putting us in a position to play in the championship game if we'd covered it a little better. They got it out to the 38-yard to the line. Um, you start look at the attitude of the team. It, it seems uh, this time last year uh, people felt like this would not be a good team. It wouldn't be a team that, that could probably win 10 games. and and contend for, for possible awards at the end of the year. And uh, what they did is they went to work, and coaches went to work and, and overcame a, a lot of adversity. Guys stepped up, they got better, and it ended up being uh, uh, one of the more fun years that we've had here in a long time. Uh, and people thought the team overachieved. And, and I don't know that teams can overachieve, but they definitely got to a different level than, than we expected uh, across the board, I think, at that time. Uh, this team's at a different place. Uh, this team is a team that is expected to contend and, and be a great team. And, and what we've got to do is make sure that the motivation, the negative motivation last year that helped this team so much, uh, the positive things that are being talked about about this team right now do not uh, encourage this team to be more complacent and walk around and feel good about themselves. They've got to go back to work. And the attitude that we've seen so far in the offseason program has been that way. They've gotten up every morning at 6. Nobody's been late. Nobody's missed. They're working really, really hard. 
I thought it was a great indicator on Tuesday morning. Uh, they worked out at uh, 6. They lifted weights after they worked out. Uh, I walked out of the building for a while. I was coming back. It was 3 or 4 o'clock, and Colt McCoy and probably 25 guys, Colt, John, Sherrod, 25 guys were walking into the stadium to go out and try to throw some. And, and that's amazing that they would run, they would lift, uh, and those running workouts are really, really tough. Uh, and then they would go back out and work that afternoon. We're also trying to decide uh, where does the leadership come from now. It's obvious with a guy like Colt that that his leadership should continue, but who else steps up? And 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 we've challenged the guys that the the hardest workers need to be the best players, and therefore they become your best leaders. And usually you've got that that 10 percent that are just born leaders. You got 10 percent that are strugglers that are trying to find their place, and then there's about 80 percent that decide are they going to follow this guy or this guy, and and that's where your leadership gets to be so important. Uh, when you go through spring practice and off season, because that's what has to carry you through the summer. And the summer may be the most important part of our process and coaches don't get to be involved. So your, your team has to be ready to lead in the summer without you being around. The, the practice uh, tomorrow will be at 3.30. Uh, we'll, we'll have the stretch around 3.30, 3.45. They'll do kicking stuff and the practice actually starts around 4. It will be open. The practice at Saturday morning will be 9.05. We didn't want to go up against baseball yesterday or tomorrow, but we have no choice. Uh, because of our junior day and because of baseball and basketball, uh, we were able to, to move the Saturday one until Saturday morning. We would uh, like to encourage everybody to come out and watch, and at the same time, we'd like to ask uh, you all and fans not to talk to the prospects who are there because we're not supposed to have media uh, set up to talk to prospects while they're there. So please respect that with the NCAA. and and let them get out of there and get home before we, we start asking them questions so it doesn't put us in an uncomfortable spot and them. And we'll try to, uh, to keep them inside the ropes because the fans are not supposed to stand and talk to them either if we have it set up. So it's the only thing about having a junior date and open practice. It's a, a sensitive thing. So we'd like to encourage the fans not to. And we'll have signs up and, and hopefully can get the kids in and get them out so they're, they are very comfortable. Uh, there's one young man, uh, there's a, a number of young people that will not participate some in spring practice, and I think John's got that to you. Uh, Jarvis Humphrey, uh, there is a release here about uh, his issues uh, with the doctor. Um, so they're holding him, and he will not participate in spring at all, and, and that's all we can say about it. It is a medical issue that, that with the doctor, and um, Ishi Edowego has had, uh, I think, five operations and Ishii came in, and, and he has a release here that talked about his career here, but uh, he will go ahead and graduate. Uh, so we're uh, pleased for Ishii that he's, he's done so well here. Uh, he's had a real tough run with his injuries, and he just felt like it was time for him to, to move forward with his life. I guess it said four surgeries, and I guess he had something broken. He had a broken foot, too, so five uh, that came up, and, uh, and we're pulling for Jarvis at the same time. Uh, and then the, the depth chart is released. The depth chart, again, is, is one that uh, is based on what we've seen in the off-season program. Uh, the coaches went over it. You don't have deep snappers on there. Will Harvey's our deep snapper and Alex Zomberg. And Alex had a shoulder operation. So we'll be looking at, uh, at more snappers. Uh, we don't have the returners on there because all of that will be worked on again in the spring. We, we've got to do a better job, we feel like, if, if People are doing a better job returning kickoffs across the country, and, and therefore it's harder to cover them, then we should be getting more out of our kickoff return because it's, it's hard to say uh, we're having trouble covering them because everybody's returning them consistently well and we're not. So we'll really go back and study uh, where should Jordan be in the return game uh, and also uh, who should be back in, in the kickoff and punt um, outside of Jordan at the same time. So we've got a lot of questions that we need to have answered.